Okay, we are, uh, actually, uh, if you remember, we are in a series called, um, uh, well, the whole year is Alive in Calling, but we are examining the book of Joshua. Everybody say the book of Joshua. Joshua. And uh, if you recall the story of Joshua, uh, that's after, Joshua is after Moses. Moses brought the Israelite out of the slavery uh, into the, just at the border of the promised land. A lot of, Moses couldn't go in because at one time he dishonored God, but God still used him to bring the Israelite people to the border of the uh, promised land, which is Canaan. And then uh, the leadership was passed on to Joshua, and Joshua uh, was young, and he has a lot of doubt, but God says, do not fear. Be courageous, because the same way I was with Moses, I will also be with you. So we actually in the past month talk about Mo uh, Joshua chapter 1. We're going to now shift a little bit from Joshua to look at a woman that is ordinary, ordinary, common woman, female, but because she did a certain thing and God chose her, turns out that she became a very extraordinary person. But before we get to know which, uh, what, what happened uh, with this woman and her little journey, we're going to look at the Bible. And the title here today is Faith Action, Faith Action. So I'm going to read to you, there's a lot of verses, well actually only like 12, but it's longer than a one verses or two verses that you usually read. But try to follow along the story because this is a very interesting story about a woman named Rahab. Rahab. Everybody say Rahab. Then Joshua, son of Nun, that's that Joshua that I spoke about earlier, then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Remember, they're at the border of uh, the promised land. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. Jericho is the frontier land at the border. Frontier town, I mean. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, Look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. So I guess the neighbor of Rahab saw two spies went into the house. And the messenger said to Rahab, Bring out the man who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, she said, yes, the man came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. This is still Rahab talking. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. And then there's a parenthesis commentary. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the roof. So the man set out in pursuit. Well, that's uh, verse 7 is missing, but I'm going to just go ahead and read it for you. So, so the man set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the forts of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. And verse 8 is right there. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up to the roof to meet the spies. And this is what she said to them. And this is this is wonderful thing that she said. I know that the Lord had given you this land and that a great fear of you, the Israelites, has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og. Those are the two kings 
uh, on the way to the Borden town. This is in the wilderness. The two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. Verse 11, when we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord, your God, remember he said it's your God because at this point he was not yet a believer in Jehovah Yahweh God in the Bible, but he said for the Lord, your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. A pretty, pretty um, wonderful things that a non-believer said about Yahweh, Israelite God. So there you have it, the story of Rahab. And this is uh, the only story about Rahab that is recorded in the book of Joshua. Jericho again is the, and this woman is a Canaanite. Canaanite, I don't know how to say it. Canaanite. 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 <laughs> That's a, a, a mouthful to say. In other words, she is obviously not a Jew or not an Israelite at that time. And she's a Canaanite woman from Canaanite tribes. And she lived in the city of Jericho. And the city of Jericho is the first city in the promised land that Joshua had to conquer in order to go through into the promised land. And all of you probably heard the story about Jericho Wall. That's where it happened there, Jericho Wall. So Joshua sent out two spies and Rahab hide them in the roof, near the roof, right? And so she played an important, important role of, of allowing the people of God to go in to the promised land. He played an important role because he cooperated with the spies. And this cooperation is because she recognized the Lord God of the Israelite, whose name was Yahweh or Jehovah, that is the true God of heaven and earth. That's what she said. Now, Everything is kind of okay, you know, there's a story, until two prominent writers of the New Testament, of course, this is in the Old Testament, right? This is in the book of Joshua. After the five books of the Bible, then you got the book of Joshua. That's the first few books of the New Testament. The two, there are two writers in the New Testament by the name of Apostle Paul and James make a commentary about Rahab. Her story is only that she was a prostitute cooperating with the spies. But these two prominent writers of the New Testament make a mention of Rahab. And it is very interesting what they say about Rahab. We're going to look into that in these two places. In Hebrew, which was credited to Apostle Paul, the writer of most of the New Testament, and James, the brother of Jesus. So in, let's look at uh, Hebrew first. In Hebrew chapter 11, the writer of Hebrew was explaining all the hero of the faith, talking about Abraham, talking about some of the prophets, and then Rahab was mentioned. It was by faith. Example of faith, right? This Hebrew chapter 11, faith is the substance of what you believe even though you don't see and all that kind of, and an example of a faith person or faith hero is Rahab. And this is what she said. Uh, this is what Hebrew, Hebrew said. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God for she had given a friendly welcome to the spy. Uh, notice the word that I Mark read, it was by faith, by faith. And we heard the story, right? She probably have a little bit of faith because she said, the Lord your God, he, he is the, the God of the heaven and the earth. I think she, he, she sympathized already at that time. Some little faith. But then because of that little faith that she had, she threw herself in the sight of the Israelite the site of the plan of God. So 
the writer of Hebrew said, Rahab is an example of faith. Because by faith, Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed. She did something good. She showed faith, she said. He said, the, the writer of the Hebrew said. Then, the book of James. And I'll tell you why these two verses is very, very interesting. The book of James, that is the book where James is putting an emphasis on action, works. Apostle Paul put a lot of emphasis on faith. In fact, one of the verses that, that Apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for yourself, from yourself. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So Apostle Paul seemed to emphasize, you need to have faith, you need to have faith, not by work. You are saved by grace. But James, on the other hand, says, you need to work to show your faith. Works. And very, very interesting that James then took Rahab as an example of work. You look at James chapter 2, verse 25, it says, Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions. It's interesting that one person that says, you should not work, you just need to have faith. But the other person says, so, and Rahab was the example of faith, but another person, another writer, emphasized, hey, you need to work. And by the way, Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her action when she hide those messengers and send them safely away by a different road. You see, at the first glance, these two verses seem to be contradict one another. Well, not really contradict if you understand it correctly. Because Paul said, believe, believe, just by faith. But the other one, James said, you need to work. Right? So, Rahab happened to be fulfilling both. Pretty interesting that both writers with two different emphasis choose Rahab as an example. So, that's how I come up with the word faith action. Action motivated by faith. That's what we need to learn from Rahab. Let's look a little bit deeper how these ordinary women end up being mentioned by these two prominent writers of the New Testament. I think there are something that we can learn, and I just want to share with you three things that we can learn from Rahab today. Number one, Rahab is a story of a nobody that God used. By the way, she's not only nobody, she was a prostitute. We read she was a prostitute. Yet somehow, the most unlikely person to be chosen, God used Rahab. When you want to hire an employee, I was a boss at one time, you know, in a, in a company, managers, and hire people. You know how I hire people is, we choose the best among the candidates. We interview, we interview, and out of like five probably that pass through the filter of HR department, which is one of the best. When we want to find a minister for God, you know, playing music or other ministry, we look for the most righteous person, the one that is honorable, so that can represent God in a way that that is, uh, you know, respectable. But somehow, God chose Rahab, the prostitute. And that actually is one of the principles that God showed us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. God chose the foolish thing, this you read in during the tithing and giving time. 
God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose a nobody. But in choosing the nobody, he showed himself strong. God is glorified through his choosing. So what is it in us, for us? This is what's in it for us. If God can use Rahab, God can use me. God can use you. That's a very simple lesson. He can use us. You may think that I don't have anything to offer. Either I'm too old, I'm past my prime. Some of us think like that. You know, where, you know, people say as soon as you're hit 40 or 50, it's all downhill from there. That's what people said. You know, I don't have anything else to, to uh, offer. You know, some of you is approaching 40. But don't believe that because it's all uphill for me. I have seen it, right? So, but you may think that. You may think, oh, I, I have nothing to offer God. I do not know how to play music. I do not know how to speak. I do not know how to uh, whatever it is. But God says, I chose Rahab. I can use you. I can choose you also. I want you to kind of get that into your spirit because some of us, we come from a background when people tell us we are nobody, we were bullied probably at one time, you know, at school, or young people sometimes are mean, right? Say things without thinking, and oh, you are just like this and like that, and all, it's a put down. But I want to let you know, God thinks differently about you. I want you to know that God thinks that you are special, he chose you, he chose Rahab. He can choose you, and he can use you. Some of you have bad experience, whatever that was, in the past, being abused, being uh, verbally or mentally or physically, God can still use you. i speaking from personal experience. I was a low self-esteem person. I couldn't imagine myself standing in front of people and speak. But yet, here I am speaking. It's all God's goodness and grace. God can use you if you say yes. If you are available, and you can say this, God, you know that I think of myself knowing nothing. You think, uh, you know that I'm thinking of myself, I don't have anything to offer. But Rahab, you use. I, you can also use. Amen? Rahab said, I'm available to help. And all I can do is just simple thing. I have uh, this little space near the roof, Okay? I know that God is with you and for your, for, for your purpose and for your mission. Okay, I'm going to let you stay up there near the roof. Well, in doing that, actually she is risking her, her life, but that's for future reference. We're going to talk about Rahab for three weeks. So rich with lessons. So number one, the thing that you can learn, if Rahab, if God can use Rahab, God can use you. Amen? Everybody say amen. The number two that, that we can see about Rahab. By the way, see, Rahab, faith action leads to breakthrough. What Rahab did that day, what Rahab did that day was actually, she didn't probably realize it, but it allowed the army and the nation of Israelite to enter into the promised land and it provides great encouragement to the young leader Joshua. Joshua was fearful. If you read Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, uh, whole chapter, chapter 1, three times God has to empower, pump Joshua so that he was not fearful because now his leader dead, Moses were, was dead, right? And she was thrown this big task of leading three million people into the promised land. And so she was, he was very, very fearful. But then Joshua went through this experience conquering Jericho, the first one. And you know that God is, is, uh, is the one that actually bring down Jericho wall, but it's under the cooperation of Rahab. Rahab being used by God, blessing God's people so that the whole army can go in. Rahab, in a way, is a breakthrough. 
for the for the Israelite people. They want to enter, you know, for 40 years, they went around and around and around because they were afraid of the big people that already resided in Canaan. The whole reason why they had to go around 40 years in the, uh, uh, in the what is it called, a wilderness, is because they were afraid. They were there actually already 40 years prior. And then the 12 spies, including Joshua, you know, 10 of the spies said, the people over there is too big. It's like giant. We cannot get there. We are afraid. Now, they are right there again. But this time, it's Joshua. Joshua, by the way, was the two spies that said, yeah, we should go in. Right now, God will do wonderful thing for us. But the 10 spies, majority, said, no, 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 let's, let's not try to fight that. that. They are too big for us. But now, Joshua was the leader, right in front of the gate of the promised land. Rahab was there to be used. She was the breakthrough. She provided the breakthrough for the Israelite, the plan of God, the will of God for the Israelite to conquer the promised land. Breakthrough! The dictionary defined breakthrough as an instant of moving beyond an obstacle. For the Israelite, the obstacle actually not so much of the town, but their heart. Their heart. They were afraid. 40 years ago, they were afraid. Today, they remember their failure to enter. They remember the giant that was in the, in the land. But they look at Rahab. God has shown favor to them through Rahab. The two spies were alive. Come back and make a report. And then not only that, God told Joshua, don't be afraid, be courageous. And not only that, God was the one that performed the miracle. They just go around and around for seven times. Jer Jericho wall came down. Can you, can you feel it if you are the Israelite over there? Can you feel the fear that, that the hate they had 40 years ago or until then all crumbling down because they saw the goodness and magnificent thing that God has done in, in their life and they're seeing it in their, with their own eyes that God is for them and, and, and fighting the war for them. What an encouragement that was. And that was Rahab providing the breakthrough. Do you want breakthrough in your life? Do you want breakthrough? Spiritual breakthrough. An action motivated by faith that moves us in the direction of God's plan for our lives. So many of us as a Christian, we are stuck. We, we, we desire to grow. We desire to be more like Christ. We desire to accomplish things for Christ, but we are stuck. We are like people wandering uh, in the wilderness for a long, long time, and, and every time we want to do something great, we, we are overwhelmed by fear and, and laziness, and, and we cannot overcome our mood, and we, we just like, ah, man, okay, whatever, next time God visit me again, you know, during the retreat, visit me again, uh, touch me again, you know, maybe at that time I'll, I'll feel more motivated to move along and so you don't ever experience breakthrough. But we need to break through to go to move to higher ground, to accomplish God's will, because God has a greater will than we know it. And unless we do action, what's special about Rahab is this. She only have a little faith, but he, she recognized God is the God of heaven and the universe. Okay, I'm going to do whatever necessary, and this is what I can do. Is I'm going to hide this spy, so that's why James said this person is, is moving along the faith because she did action. She did the work. A lot of us, we believe in our hearts, but we don't move according to what the Word of God says. And that's a shame. That's a sayang. It's a pity. Because God can do so much thing in our lives if we just make a decision to do action according to our faith. You know, faith is not 
faith until we take action with it. Faith is not just an agreement, mental agreement. You know, a lot of Christian think, okay, I, I, I agree, pastor. You preach like that and you tell us the truth. We agree. Okay, that's a mental agreement. You understand my word. You understand my logic. And in fact, you do have faith, belief in your heart. I agree with what pastor is saying. But that is not faith until you realize it in your life. You need to take action. You need to move along what God wants you to do at your whatever it is that God wants you to do at this moment in your life. So many young people go to retreat where they hear the word of God is calling them to do something and to grow in a certain area. Then they come back home and everything is the same. Nothing changed. After three days, the effect of emotional, whatever that they experienced, even though God actually spoke to them, but after a week, one month, they forgot and life come back. Why? Because they were only motivated by their understanding and emotion maybe, but that faith never come into manifestation and fruits in their life. And that's why they go back to their old life, the same thing, nothing changed. Retreat after retreat, there is no real action and there is no real growth because they refuse to take action. I believe that that is the key. If you want to grow spiritually and have breakthrough, you need to do whatever that God revealed to you. Oswald Chamber, I learned from him because that's my devotional every morning. She said this, he said this, never allow God to show you the truth without you live it out immediately. Whatever you pick up the truth immediately, think about how you can apply. If you want to grow and you think, ah, there's no growth in my life. I'm, I'm today, I'm still the same like 10 years ago. I'm okay, what, what new? This is Christian church. I go to church, I'm, you know, every week. But I don't feel nothing. I don't feel growth. Well, try, take action based on faith and the word of God. You will see growth. You will. That is the key. If you want to grow in your faith, you must do it. If God calls you into the ministry, then go to ministry. If God calls you to pray for someone, go pray for someone. If God calls you to forgive someone, go forgive that person. Just do it because it's the word of God. If God says, do it now, don't delay, focus on it. Make your whole life power and energy stir to the direction that God is showing you. Just Fully trust Him and let the consequence fall it may be. Knowing that God is faithful anyway and He loves you, He's not going to lead you to the bad places and misfortune if you obey Him. Just let whatever. All I know is just obey. And God will bless you. I saw that. I experienced, I saw that in, in my friends. My friend, before he was, she was Christian, he he want to go to good school. And in Indo, you know that you can just make any kind of report, right? You can pay someone. And so he paid someone to produce a new report card in order to apply to university. And he got accepted because of that fake report. You know, math, math A, physics, A, whatever, A, 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 A. You can do that in Indo, you know, like even maybe until today. But then she came he came, this is a man, his name is Rocky. He, he applied, <laughs> it's Rocky, right, coming back from behind. Uh, he, he got accepted to the university, but then he, he experienced uh, a, a new life. He got introduced to Jesus, he be, became a believer. So the second semester, God spoke to his heart and reminded him, you got into this school because of fake report. You need to get right. He was praying for a few days, you know, because what's the risk? The risk is he's going to go to the admission office and admit that this is a fake uh, report, and they're going to send him back to Indo. This is in Wisconsin. But he obeyed. He obeyed. He went into the admission office. He said, this is a fake report that I did. I'm, I'm very sorry. 
uh, you know, whatever you want to do. By God's grace, the university gave him a chance. If you didn't get below B, you're going to stay. You can stay in the school. But can you imagine the struggle of that, that young person? He's old now, as old as me. Rocky, right? I mean, you can imagine the struggle, right? I mean, this is his future he's talking about. But he said, I trust God. And I'll let the consequence fall wherever it may be because I believe that even if the school kick me out, God is still going to be with me and he's going to bless me. He's going to be with me. It's, it's a good story. I, I like that story. If God tells you to do something, don't delay it. Focus on it. The key to growth is that you take action based on faith. One last thing I'm going to share with you. Yeah, this is the faith thing that um, Rahab said, right? Our hearts melt in fear and everyone's courage fail because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Well, this is one good statement that I think all of us need to hear. Do not ask God to guide your footstep if you're not willing to move your feet. That's kind of nice, right? True, right? You, we, ask, we ask God, guide us, God, to, to, to enter into this new season of life and we don't know what, what's going to happen. We need your guidance. But then when God says something, you refuse to move your foot and just stay the same and not change. And, and, and then later on, when, when things not happening, um, you start to blame God. But God says, I have told you, I have to, told you to take action of what you believe. You have known so many truths. Have you done anything about it? The last one. Faith action leads to a place of blessing. And this is what, what um, the wonderful thing about this. A place of blessing. Because Rahab took faith action. She and her family became a part of God's wonderful plan. And, and you'll, be, you'll be surprised, probably some of us will be surprised what Rahab played in the salvation plan of God. So Rahab married someone by the name of Salmon. Okay, not the fish salmon, but salmon, right? By the way, this, is, this, this whole genealogy is from the genealogy of Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, the gospel chapter 1. When, when Matthew introduced Jesus, he revealed the, the descendant, the ancestor of Jesus. And this is what we read in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, that Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. So Boaz actually was a child of Rahab. Okay? And this Boaz married to Ruth, the book of Ruth, in the Old Testament. In the book of that. So that is Boaz. Boaz married Ruth. They have child by the name of Obed. Obed had a child by the name of Jesse. Jesse has a child by the name of David, the greatest king of Israel. Rahab was the great, great grandmother of King David. And then, if you continue to read verse 6, 7, you will see, eventually from King David and then many, many other descendants and then come Jesus Christ through Joseph, the father of Jesus. Even though I cannot see it, I know that you're working. Even though I don't feel it, I know that you're working. Rahab did not know. How can he possibly tell the future? Well, Rahab probably, if she lived long enough, she can see the, the great, great grandchildren, which is King David. But I doubt it. Right? Four generations, not many. Uh, but my, my uh, mother in law, right? a mother of Tian Yen, that's a one generation. Tian Yen, the mother of Tiffany, that's second generation. Tiffany, the mother of Naomi, three generations. So my, my mother in law can still see Naomi. Three generation. I doubt it that, that uh, my mother-in-law can see the child of Naomi. 
<laughs> which is maybe 30 more years from now, right? But did you see how God used Rahab unbeknownst to her? Gak tahu si Rahabnya. Tapi karena dia punya iman, ya, dan dia melakukan apa yang sesuai dengan imannya, he did, she did the, the thing that that's according to just little faith that she had. God is placing her in the history of the salvation of the humankind. Like because later on, Jesus Christ has come from that descendant line, ancestor ancestry line. Wonderful thing, amen. From a nobody. From a nobody. God can use you too. You don't have to care about what God is going to do in the future. But I just want to let you know that God is a good God and whatever that you do for Him today is not in vain. If, you, if God wants to use you to bless others by simply praying, if, that, if you see some sick person somewhere on the street or sad, or just simply praying for that person, it's not in vain. Some simple thing, simple thing. You just got to move according to your faith. You want to see growth in your life. Do something about it. So just uh, very quickly summarize, and then I invite uh, our musician to just come to the front. Rahab is a wonderful person. We can, when we look at Rahab, we have hope. Why? Because this is prostitute that God can use and bless. I'm looking at myself, God, I, I come from no, nobody. I really, I don't know how to speak. I was low self-esteem. I was a student poor at that too, at one time. But God is using me to bless my family. And we have a church and I'm the pastor. It's a blessing for me. Look, you are chosen for God's purpose. You are. No matter what you think of yourself. No matter how limited you think you are. God can choose you if you say, yes, God. I have nothing, but that you can use me, God. Because you have used Rahab. Your faith action will lead to growth. Believe me, believe me, believe me. For 30 years I become Christian. All my breakthrough is because I do simple things for God based on faith. And then God bring me to a higher level. You don't want to stay the same level like baby Christian all the time. You, yeah, it's, it's appropriate for you to sing uh, the children ministry song, right? Uh, whatever that they sing. I've got joy like a river. I got, oh, this is kind of nice song, right? But you got to grow, right? You're going to dig into the deep truth that is useful for our lives. That God can use to glorify His name. Your faith action leads to growth. Your faith action leads to blessing. Whether you see it or you don't. For in the case of Rahab, it's too long of a time in the future. But it doesn't matter. Actually, she saw something. Boaz, her son, is a rich landowner in Israel by the time Boaz was a, a mid mid ages, middle age person. That's why he was able to redeem Ruth. It's a wonderful story. You just read the book of Ruth. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Let's all stand.